All right, now our table's looking good. And if we scroll back up here, we can take a look over all of our fields. Looks good. We got our name in there and our company and our address. We're still missing something, however. We need a way to uniquely track each customer, some way to set aside every customer from every other customer. Now, we could use name, but we might have 50 Smiths and maybe even 15 John Smiths. So name's not really good. Company name, well, company name's not really good either because we could have, you know, six customers from IBM, for example. You could use phone or fax number, but again, sometimes you have companies that share those. I have clients that share the same fax number. So let's put in here some kind of a field that will allow us to uniquely identify each customer. The best way that I've found to do that is to create a customer ID. Again, no spaces. And let's make that an auto number field. Now, if you recall from a few minutes ago, an auto number will start off at 1, and then each new record gets the next number in the series. So the first customer is customer number 1, the next customer is customer number 2, and so on. The best part is we don't have to worry about assigning that number. Access takes care of us automatically. So when we go to add a new customer, we don't have to scramble around and say, okay, what's the next new customer number? Access just, boom, assigns it to the next one. So that's what customer ID is going to be, an auto number. Access will handle that for us. Now, just as a matter of good form, good database design, I like to have the customer ID at the top of the table. The ID for any table should be at the top of the table. I like to put it in last just so I can demonstrate how to do this. Let's move the customer ID up to the top of the table. Here's how you move a field. Take your mouse and click on this gray box over here to the left of customer ID. That will highlight the row that customer ID is in. Now let go of the mouse button. You should be able to move your mouse around. And then click on that same spot, hold it down, and drag it up. And let it go at the very top. And there we go. That's how you can move these fields around. And now I'll click over here in right field somewhere to unhighlight that row. Moving fields around inside of tables really isn't very important, but I'd like to show you how to do it. Now keep in mind that every one of our tables should have an ID of some kind. So when we build tables in the future, let's think the very first thing that we put in each table is going to be the ID for that table. Our product table is going to have a product ID. Our employees are all going to have an employee ID and so on. Whether or not you use that ID with your people, with your customers, with your employees is irrelevant but that number is great for internal tracking, for access to know which customer is which. As we get into more advanced classes, you'll see how these IDs become really important. Now, let's go ahead and save our table. Right up here on the toolbar is our little floppy disk button. If you hold your mouse over it, it says Save. Go ahead and click on the Save button now. The Save As dialog box appears, asking us to give the table a name. Let's type in Customer T. Again, do not put any spaces between Customer and T. And everybody always asks me, well, why do I put the T on the end? Well, I like to differentiate all of my tables with a T. All of my queries get a Q. All of my forms get an F. All of my reports get an R, and so on. The reason why, again, becomes much more self-evident when we start getting into some advanced database techniques like programming and some advanced query writing. Again, just trust me. And all of your tables with a big capital T. Now, in some books or in some classes, you may see them do this, TBL customer or customers. This is really just a matter of style. Different people, 
do it different ways. My personal way, I like to do it like this. Customer T. If you want to do it differently, that's fine. Just pick a style and maintain consistency. Let's go ahead now and click on OK to save our table. Oh, look at this mess. Now we got an error message. It says there is no primary key defined. What's a primary key? Well, a primary key essentially is that one special field that differentiates each record in your table from all of the other records. For example, our customer ID is a good primary key because no two records can have the same customer ID. Now, we know that that's what the customer ID is going to be doing. However, we haven't told Access that the customer ID is our primary key. So do we want to create a primary key now? At this point, let's go ahead and click Yes. What's going to happen is Access will see an auto number sitting there, and it will automatically make customer ID our primary key for us. We could have done it manually earlier, by clicking on this little key symbol on the toolbar. But you know what? I've been building databases for 10 years now, and I never remember to do this. So in class, I like to show people this error message because you're going to build a table, and you're going to, you're going to save your table, and you're going to forget to set your primary key. So I like to show you this error message so you don't panic. So go ahead and click on Yes. And now notice Access put that little key symbol there. Okay, the little key symbols over to the left. That means that our customer ID is now our primary key. One of the nice things that a primary key does is it indexes the customer ID field. Now, we're going to talk a lot more about indexing in the next class, but one of the nice things that indexing does is it prevents duplicate values. You can see down here where it says indexed, yes, no duplicates. That means it's impossible for you to have two records with the same customer ID. So that's one of the things that the primary key will do for you. So now our table is built. Let's go ahead and click on the X in the upper right hand corner here to close the customer table from design mode. And now we're back to our database window and you can see here is our customer T, our customer table, all ready for data.